Uh, Dale, you and I met, well, probably about 30, 35 years ago uh, down at your, your uh, factory with yes. uh, Peter Corley. And, uh, yeah. You've come a long way from the past into the future was something that's totally revolutionary. Give me a little bit of history, what's happened over the last 30 years. Oh, wow. Uh, condensed. Condensed. That's that's difficult. It's been a... Okay, well, let's jump forward to this airplane. Okay. How did you get involved in the electric end of it? Well, I've always wanted to electrify the laser. It's a perfect candidate. It's got low power consumption. We originally had only two five and a half horsepower engines on it. That flew it quite well. Um, so it doesn't take much power to keep it in the air, which is what you need for electric. So I knew I had the right airplane to do it. And I just, I've been for 10 years. I've been wanting to do it. I've tried four or five times, spending a couple thousand dollars each time, and ending up with one component that wasn't going to be good enough. So finally, this time I uh, I found all the components that were going to work. Uh, basically, off off the shelf. There's 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 not a whole lot of high tech stuff that I had to do other than put it together and make sure the numbers were right and make it work. So I'm hoping that this will show people that uh, you can do it. Right now you can electrify a laser for less than it costs you to put new engines on it that they originally came with. So uh, it's, this is the time of electrics and, and this, this can happen. I don't plan on producing this. I'm just this is a one off. For yourself. I've, I've done I've done all the production before. I built twelve hundred airplanes and uh, I, I I I just did this for myself. Now when you were building this particular airplane, did you have or did you change anything to lighten the airplane down so that it would be a little easier for the engines? Actually I chose an airplane that was the heaviest of our airplanes. Um, because uh, I did think I would be flying it off water. Uh, so it's got 50 pounds, 40 pounds of extra weight in it maybe, versus one that I could have put it on. Uh, but I'm happy with what I got. It's got. I've got good performance. Weight is weight is definitely a key factor in anything, any electric airplane, so you want to keep it. I was counting ounces um, until I uh, reread part 103 and decided that um, the batteries um, were the fuel and had to be counted as the five gallons of gasoline. Oh. You can't, uh -oh. So you were able then to account, uh, put the batteries in as the fuel? That's what I, uh, that's how I read part 103. Uh, it says 254 pounds for the airplane and five gallons of fuel. And you also have a 75 pound, I believe, float balloon. Yeah, if, yeah, and that's, okay. a, that's a different story. And I'm still, I'm well within that. Um, but the five gallons of fuel is key because Five gallons is a measurement of volume, not weight. So uh, my fuel, and the FAA doesn't define fuel they, uh, in their definitions. So I looked up in Wikipedia and it says any material that uh, releases energy. So my fuel are the lipo cells. I measured every lipo cell I have on board. And five gallons is 1155 cubic inches, if I recall. And I have 1125 cubic inches of fuel. So I have less than five gallons of fuel. So I can take all my 90 pounds of battery out, and my empty weight is without battery, which is 200 pounds, plus, plus the float stuff. Now, when you're flying the airplane, is there any difference in the feel of the airplane? You're using, what, two 12-horsepower engines now, or 12, 13 horse? No, it's, it fits right in between the, the two engines, uh, the two, the, 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 the nine and a half horsepower Rotexes that we sold most laser with, and the two 18-horsepower JPXs. It's, it performs right in between there, and nothing's uh, unexpected. There's some, there's some unique things when you're flying electric. Uh, you know, you can, when you're taxiing, you can, uh, just bring the throttle backs and not burn any fuel. <laughs> and uh, in the air, it's uh, it's it's much smoother at low RPMs. Yeah, you don't get that old yeah. pumpiness that you yeah, get you don't have road to, taxes. You don't have to. You, you can actually use the engines to change your glide ratio, um, so that you can become a sailplane of any glide ratio you want just by playing with the throttles at low PRPM. 
And that's really neat. I've done a lot of gliding with this so far, and that's a neat feature. Now, when you compare, say, the five gallons of fuel that you would have on the old uh, 276, or the old... Uh, 185. 185s. How does that compare to life of uh, and flying it with the electric? The what? The fuel? Yeah. Say you had uh, two 185s on this, and yeah. you had the five gallons of fuel on board. You would be able to fly for, what, uh, three oh, hours? No, I, I think we'd be two and a half hours at most, somewhere in there. And how would that compare to what you're doing now? Uh, well, I'm using... Let's go back to wheeled version because that's what your the rate rotexes would have been. So the wheeled version, I'm using one and a half gallons of fuel for every flight hour to charge my batteries. And so it's uh, it's actually less fuel. Well, it's about the same fuel as a rotex and less fuel than the, the next one. So I'm all, I'm greener than I was before, even even charging with the. Uh, generators. Now, how are we powering this? Like, how many batteries do we have here, and what kind of, of uh, charging times are we looking at? Uh, there's 48 batteries of, of four cells in each wing, weighing about 50 pounds, and uh, we're charging them off these chargers uh, off the one host circuit right now, and that'll take uh, about four hours to charge that on one host circuit. And cost-wise, how would this whole system uh, relate to the cost of, say, two 185 Rotex? Well, much cheaper, actually. Right, right, right here we have the, the motor at $1,000, the controller at $650, a couple hundred dollar prop. So we got about $2,000 in each engine. Um, you can't consider the cost of the battery in your conversion. Your batteries are prepaid fuel. So... Uh, it's not a conversion price. It's it's money in the bank, sort of. Uh, so that's about all, all the cost you have. And the chargers, um, you just decide how many chargers you need for the charge rate, that how fast you want to charge it. With six chargers, I can charge it in an hour and 15 minutes. Um, and that's about $1,000 there and $1,000 over there. So let's say you want to duplicate what I've got here. You've got $2,000 in chargers. $2,000, you got $6,000 plus your prepaid fuel, which is $3,300. So for about $10,000, you're flying with this, and you got about 300 hours worth of fuel on board, but you got to charge it every hour of 40 minutes. If someone had a laser, wanted to do a conversion like this, what are they going to have to do to their airplane in order to accommodate the engines or uh, the, the whole setup? Well, if, if they want to match what I've done, they have to build a bat three battery compartments in the wing, and they have to buy the batteries and assemble them on a circuit board like this, which I'd be happy to give anybody the, the drawings for. Because uh, there's, there's over 1,200 of these that are out there. Right. And a lot of them are flying the old Pioneer uh, That's chainsaw. That's right. There's a lot of lasers out there that, are, that need electric power <laughs> because the engines are old and... And I think I'm going to uh, increase the value of the used laser market by flying here. So, if somebody wanted to do this, is there a time you think that it would take them to do it? Like, there's nothing, if they built the airplane themselves, it shouldn't be a chore for them to do what they well, have to do. That, de that depends if there's plans available. I guess, I'm, I, I don't plan on making a commercial venture out of this. I just want, I want somebody to copy it and do it. <laughs> so... Um, or, or come up with something different and do it. I'm just showing people that it can be done, and uh, it's not that hard and not that expensive. Now I understand you've also posted most of this stuff on the internet. The whole build some... log, the whole build log of this is on the rcgroups.com forum. Uh, it's a radio control modelers uh, forum, and all you got to do is search uh, electric laser in Google, and that uh, that thread will come up, and it's got everything that I've done so far pictures and everything. No plans, but... You don't want anybody contacting you directly? Let them go to the forum and then get their answer, your questions answered. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm here to answer anybody's questions at Oshkosh, so um, I, I'm, I'm I'll just... answer anything on the forum, too. So. Okay. Uh, uh, the easiest way is through the forum. Okay. There's not a, a name, a phone number, an address, a website they can go to other than the forum? No, I think the forum's the best way. I don't want to do it commercially, remember? <laughs> okay, thank you very much for your time, Jeff. Thanks.